So um, with that said, we're going to go back to the presentation here. And um, I am going to go directly into the next panel. We have Michael Donfrio from Engineer Tax Services. And uh, Michael, are you, are you on the line right now? Are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you perfect. Um, I'm going to turn this over to you. Uh, we're looking forward to a strong close. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, am I supposed to turn my, my video on or, or not? It, it doesn't make a difference to me. Just let me know. Uh, there's not going to be any video. Um, maybe for the next one, but not this one. Okay. I, I was hoping you were going to get to see my smile, but uh, I, was, I was feeling extra pretty for you all today, but it's all good. Um, thank you again for another excellent session today. Um, I've been listening in all day and, and yesterday and learned a lot. Um, I have a great lineup of uh, folks that we'll be speaking with in our panel today. Um, the topic is private debt and direct lending, capturing opportunities and new issues or the secondary market. Where are we getting deals done uh, versus the second secondary market opportunities? Got Brock Freeman with a uh, managing partner with Kirtland Capital Partners and Camilo Nino with uh, Linkvest Capital. Tim Sachs with Angulus Capital Management and Stephen D. Subrit with uh, Lest Group. Um, so I think I got the my panelists on the line with me. We'll see how it all goes here with Zoom, but I, we've done this before and it has gone all right. And I'll kind of keep it in the order uh, that we have everybody listed there. So we'll go uh, with Brock first. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll give a, just a quick introduction of myself uh, so you know who is hosting this panel. Um, this is Mike Donofrio. Again, I'm Managing Director with the ETS, Engineered Tax Services. Um, based out of Palm Beach, Florida is where our home office is, but uh, I'm actually in Charlotte, North Carolina today with, with my family. I manage our team across the country. Unique firm. We're a hybrid between a licensed engineering firm and specialty tax credit firm. Uh, so I'm typically working uh, up and down the food chain of federal, state, local incentives, credits, rebates, et cetera. Uh, our clients are family offices, investment groups, uh, high net worth individuals, companies, and business owners as well. Uh, we understand what just happened in the CARES Act, uh, as well as tax reform and the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and we can really help uh, maximize all that for uh, companies and property owners and investors. There's some great things that came out of the CARES Act, uh, in addition to uh, th these loans, the PPP and EIDL and Main Street Lending Programs. Uh, which we'll talk about some of that today. Um, but that's some background on myself. If I can be of assistance to you, you know, with any of these specialty tax credits or looking at uh, current year returns or, or retroactive lookbacks to help generate some refunds, that's what I do. And we've been helping a lot of clients every day. So that's, that's enough about me. There's my contact information on there. Uh, but Brock, uh, let's get to you. How, how are things going? Where, where are you at? Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you got going on. Great. Yes, I'm talking to you from Seattle. Nice day today up here. I'm the managing partner at Kirkland Capital Group. Kirkland Capital is relatively new. We formed last year and got uh, started lending this year. But uh, my partners and I were certainly not new to real estate finance. Uh, it's been pretty much my whole career. I <clears throat> started out in capital markets. Uh, actually, in Taiwan, I was uh, worked on the for a company in Taiwan on the covering the Taiwan stock market, but uh, then returned to the United States and uh, got quickly pulled into real estate finance. But then uh, I took a turn to building systems for real estate finance, uh, and then after '08, I took a break, sort of a forced break out of the the whole real estate arena and went over to corporate finance and built systems and, and did stuff there. And a few years ago, decided that I was done with that. And I wanted to come back where we have a lot more fun here in real estate, I believe. And I'm super glad I'm back. Opportunity came up to form Kirkland Capital with uh, 
someone I knew from the old days, plus another friend of mine who's a longtime fund manager. And so we've got this up and running now. Uh, I, <clears throat> I'm building a broker business, uh, broker input, uh, getting brokers to come in and send us loans, as well as uh, taking care of a lot of the, the IT part of it with my background there. So enough about me. Well, Brock, thanks. That, that was pretty cool. Hey, I noticed on your slide there, you mentioned technology, machine learning, AI. Uh, we work, we work, work with a lot of clients in that space, especially manufacturing and the next uh, um, you know, workforce fl floor that's going to have a lot of that stuff. Can, can you give me some more color on, on what you guys do related to that? Yeah, when we had started, we not only saw an opportunity in the small balance CRE bridge debt space, However, this is really, and this is one of the reasons I was excited to come back to real estate, was just the, the huge impact that we're seeing of technology that is affecting every part. Uh, I, I even started, before I, we even started uh, KCG, I started running a, a monthly prop tech meetup, which is a little bit on hiatus because of the coronavirus, but a monthly prop tech startup here in Seattle where we'd focus on maybe multifamily one time, residential real estate another time, and we get some startups, and there's a lot of startups here in Seattle around PropTech, uh, into a room, talk about it with people in the industry, helping them kind of bridge that gap and understand what's coming down the pipe, because it's coming a lot faster than you might think. We also see that when we started at KCG, that there was definitely an opportunity here that with the technology around AI, machine learning, uh, and just using technology in general, that we could really uh, do something that has been a challenge, particularly in the small balance space, and, 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 and take what had been done actually a long time ago in residential real estate and apply that to, to some degree to the small balance CRE finance space. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, no, let's, you and I talk about that separately. I, I bring it up because I, I work with some companies right there in Seattle uh, in conjunction with Microsoft and what they're doing with the new HoloLens. So I'd echo everything you know, that HoloLens too. We're, we're using it on site visits and, and uh, you know, virtual tours and a lot of stuff that's happening in real estate. So it's, it's amazing how that's transitioning into real estate very quickly, especially with COVID situation. Oh, um, absolutely. And we could talk about that and how that's affected things as well. Uh, and I think that if you're not aware of how that's going to affect finance, I think it will, particularly around how things or where things are going to get built, where people are going to be at, and the flexibility around that with what we've seen now, maybe three to five years worth of change stuffed into three months and forced into these companies that had resisted it so much before. Excellent. Moving on. Camille, what's going on with LinkVest? What, uh, where are you at? What's going on behind the scenes? Give us uh, your overview. Uh, Camillo, can, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Hang on one second here. Yeah. Just, a, just a, a, no, a note, make sure you unmute yourself on your phone if you're calling in and also unmute yourself on the, um, on the, on the, on the web app if you're using that as well. All right, so what, Michael, why don't you move on to the next person and we'll figure out what's going on with Camilla's mic. Okay, no problem. Tim Sack. Hello. Oh. Hello. Camilo, Camilo, are you there? Can you hear yeah, us okay? You Yes, we can yes, hear I you can now. hear you just fine. Uh, I don't know what happened because it showed that I was unmute already. Uh, thank you for having us. Great event. Playa, Michael, Marcelo, everybody. Uh, it's been a really interesting event so far. Uh, we are Linkvest Capital. We are a co-investment platform for alternative investments based in Miami uh, with operations in Florida and, and uh, Georgia. Um, Basically, what we've been doing is developing um, alternative investment opportunities where we co-invest with either family offices, multifamily offices, um, registered investment advisors, or high network individuals. We have mainly three kinds of products for those alternative investments. The first one, and which is related to this specific um, 
panel that we are having today is the lending side. We created LB Lending, which is link best lending. It's a mortgage lender registered in the state of Florida. We do our own servicing. Uh, by the way, we use TMO, uh, good presentations that we just saw. Um, we have done over 400 million in transactions. Right now we have close to 200 million in, in outstanding portfolio. Uh, we do short-term bridge lending, basically a financial tool for developers, sponsors, real estate investors that need to create value and, and that are looking for short-term uh, financing or bridge financing while they can create a value and either sell the property, refinance the property or bring equity uh, but uh, with a higher base after creating the value that they want to. Um, that lending side creates some opportunities for us because we have met really great people, great sponsors, great borrowers, great developers that we have worked with in the lending side. And that's how we create uh, the second product, which is Lingbest Properties, where we acquire basically triple net uh proper triple net leases uh properties uh in florida and in georgia just looking for the sometimes cover land play or just looking for the cash flow that the project that the product generates um and also because of the relationships with banks and developers we end up partnering in in multifamily development projects only in florida for now with with great teams, with great experience, uh, and we co-develop and co-invest with them in the development of multifamily projects. Uh, that's why we always say our purpose is long-term partnerships, and we really believe in that because we start lending money to some people, then we like what they do, we like their experience, uh, we have a good relationship with them, and we end up partnering with them, not as lenders, or not only as, as lenders, we can do the lending side also, but also as equity partners in the development or in the acquisition or repositioning on, on the assets. That's what, what we do and that's who we are. Very nice. And, and like I mentioned, we're, we're based up in Palm Beach, Florida. So we, we have a ton of uh, Florida clients plus international. Um, you know, and Georgia and the Carolinas, there's a lot, lot of business we could do together uh, that, that I think your platform could be helpful. Uh, right. so, so thank you for that, that, that overview. Let's make sure that we uh, discuss that. Again, that's the purpose for these types of uh, webinars and webcasts is to understand what everybody's doing, but also to make the connection um, to, to then reach out to, to, to explore the, the, the products and services and synergies. I found that these these webcasts, but then actual following up and talking with each of these folks individually really helps. Uh, but thanks for that initial I agree. overview. That's the whole idea. Yeah, uh, Tim Sachs, what's, what's going on? Hi, Michael. Um, glad to be speaking here. Thanks to Flya for putting this together. Uh, essentially, um, I am Tim Sachs. I am the Chief Investment Officer of Angulus Capital Management, LLC and also the general partner for Angulus Lending Opportunities Fund. We launched Angulus Lending Opportunities Fund in 2015 with a new innovative strategy aligned with the emerging crowdfunding sector. Uh, essentially, what we like to do is partner with them to uh, uh, gain liquidity on our investments uh, instead of or in place of using leverage. And essentially, since inception in 2015, we have originated over 60 million in private loans. Uh, and of that, we've sold actually 40 million in whole notes to our um, crowdfunding partners uh, for the benefit of our investors. And in doing so, we have generated returns since 2015 in the range of 8% to 12.4% uh, with no capital losses. Um, prior to our fund, uh, launching the fund. I was with Deutsche Bank for 16 years and I ended my term there as the head of United States analytics for Deutsche Bank fund services. Uh, prior, prior to that, I spent a significant amount of time working in our global offices for Deutsche Bank and uh, primarily in the structured finance space. Um, so I'll keep it short and sweet and with intent to answer some of your questions 
later on. Uh, but essentially, uh, in light of the recent economic events, I remain absolutely bullish on the private real estate lending markets, especially with our innovative strategy that looks to mitigate risk, preserve capital, and generate returns for our investors. Yeah, thanks, Tim. And I, I agree. I mean, real estate has is kind of proven through the ups and downs here of, of, of this year and previous cycles. You know, the, the, the right real estate re really provides some of the best potential medium and long term term returns with the tax mitigation and wealth preservation strategies um, of that real estate. Uh, of course, there's some specific asset classes that are probably impacted right now more than others, but you know, especially multifamily and some of these others. Uh, and I'm interested to learn learning more about this this crowdfunding because I'm I'm hearing more and more about it uh, every day. It adds an interesting layer to the capital stack, which we'll we'll talk more about. Uh, Stephen, uh, how are you doing today? Where are you at? Good, good. How are you? I'm here, uh, city in Miami, Florida. All right. Okay, not, not very far from you. Beautiful day down here. So, uh, well, pleasure to meet you, uh, Michael, as well. And uh, thank you, uh, Michael Verselli and Playa, for inviting us to this uh, webinar. Pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, well, to you know, try to be brief here, what Leste Group is, we are an alternative investment platform, uh, originally from Brazil, uh, where I'm from. We've established ourselves here in Miami uh, five years ago when we decided to uh, bring most of our capital out of Brazil due to the political situation down there and start investing here in various fronts that we always, uh, that we think that there's in a symmetry in, in the risk reward space. Uh, and direct lending is something we've been doing there for many, many years uh, with, without the uh, legal framework, if you will, uh, or, or, you know, the, the, the uh, rule of law that the U.S. has. So this was a, a, a fantastic move we've made. We found our, uh, we found very interesting investments here in the U.S. Uh, going through these uh, real estate uh, bridge loans, uh, you know, mezzanine, and, and as Camilo mentioned earlier, we also like to start our relationships with counterparties through the credit space. It's a good way to start meeting people. But uh, you know, after many, uh, many, many deals done and uh, many years passed, we've st we've also started vehicles uh, to start uh, to invest in uh, equity real estate as well. We've done uh, development of multifamily. We've done uh, we we have a we own a few hotels uh, and a hospitality fund. We also do medical office buildings where we invest in these uh, real estate assets as well. So we, the idea is to also to, to, to be flexible in terms of uh, how you enter certain, certain uh, investments. The good thing is that we, we have the capital. Uh, whenever we enter to a transaction or a bidding contest, it's, it's because we have the capital. So, so that gives us the speed and agility to sometimes uh, pull the trigger on a deal uh, faster than, than, than a regular lender, if you will. Very, very cool, uh, and I'm excited to have you on. We got we got panelists on this call from Seattle all the way to Miami and uh, <laughs> from Brazil and every everywhere else. But uh, th thanks for that overview. I'm going to jump back to uh, back to Brock uh, and ask some some leading questions here, uh, and then after Brock gives the answer, if if any of the others want to want to chime in on any of these these questions, that would be that would be great. But Brock, with, with so much of the government assistance programs potentially ending in the next month or so, um, there could be a lot of opportunity coming soon after. How, how are you preparing for avoiding the increased risk that may come with that opportunity? And you know, is it changing the, the, the valuations and, and just uh, your, your deals overall? Absolutely. Uh... <clears throat> One of the easiest things, of course, that we've seen across the board, and we saw it pretty quick with pretty much everybody, was lowered LTVs. Uh, we also are asking for prepaid interest, uh, anywhere from six to 12 months up front, uh, as well as we're doing a lot more thorough vacancy or tenant no payment stress testing on our pro forma modeling. You know, th those are some of the areas. We are, as we have when we established the, the lending program, was ensuring that we had a legitimate exit 
plan for that loan. We don't want to hold that loan on the books. We don't want to, we want to see repeat business from our mm-hmm. borrowers. And so we want to make sure that they've thought about and, and, and have that exit strategy. So usually that means an LOI or something like that uh, from the long-term lender that says, well, if they fix this or that, then we're get, get their DSER to a certain point, then we're good with the loan. That way we know what the plan is for that borrower during that time that we're lending to them. And we can make sure that <clears throat> they have that exit plan and they're actually executing on that. I, this is, I think, a, a good question also for my fellow panelists. And I'd love to hear what they are doing as well for mitigating the, the additional risk that, that uh, is really coming down the pipe probably in the next couple of months. Yep, I, I agree. It's probably the most, most important topic right now. Yeah. Um, Camilo, what do, yes. what, what do you think about that? Sure. Uh, first, we are not a fund and we don't have leverage. So that part for us is being really, really good in this, in, 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 in this crisis. Um, because we do deal by deal. We, we don't have the fund structure, which, which sometimes is easier to manage, but, but when the crisis comes, uh, it's easier to explain to every investor or so every family office exactly the deal that they are in and what is happening with the borrower and with the deal and how we can work together to, to, to deal with the problem. So no leverage, not a fund. We also reduce the LTV. I think everybody is doing that. Um, we are continue lending because a lot of private lenders and a lot of banks stopped lending basically since mid-March. We continue to lend, but in a more conservative way. Uh, we also do the prepaid interest uh, that, that you just mentioned, uh, six to 12 months. So we can, we can have, uh, we, we don't depend on the cash flow of the borrower or the property in the next six to 12 months where we think everything is going to be more stable. Um, we focus on, on managing the, the loans that we currently have. Uh, that's been our approach and our priority since March. Um, working with the sponsors and the borrowers. Uh, we have done some agreements with them. We have increased actually some lending to the current uh, projects that we are in. Um, if we believe in the project, in the plan, in the sponsor experience and quality. Um, also working with multifamily offices and institutional kind of investors uh, give us patient capital so they can wait. Uh, and I think um, everybody under the current circumstances, oh, the, 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 the previous plans m- m- have changed. The market is changing, the conditions, the conditions are changing. So if you were waiting for an exit in six months, maybe it's not going to be in six months. Maybe it's going to be in 12 or 18. But as, as long as the borrower, the project, the property, the location is good, we, we are willing to, to wait and to work with the, with the borrowers and, and, and be really a financial partner and not, not only a lender that wants to get out as soon as possible because he's scared about the crisis. Um, that, that's basically what we've been doing. Um, we, we are doing repeat businesses. So we are working with the borrowers that we already know that already show us that they have the experience and that they can they have the financial strength to, to, to be able to execute their plans. We rather do more deals with them than start lending to people that we don't know in locations or property that we are not comfortable with. That, that's been our approach so far. Okay. And, and Tim, how about you? What's your, what's your uh, answers to the, uh, the, to the current situation and increased risk? Um, I would think maybe that crowdfunding uh, portion might might de-risk it a little bit what what what, what do you think that's correct thanks michael essentially i don't want to say location three times but you guys get the drift right and and so beyond location uh we're we've narrowed down that the region uh but beyond that we are actually looking at it as as an opportunity to go to our rolodex of our best proven borrowers and empower them to find good deals and, and my preference as a CIO would be to work with borrowers with strong net liquidity and borrowers that we've done and had multiple completed exits with. And, and so that's our focus. Our focus is not on advertising and going out and finding new relationships. 
um, but we want to empower our existing proven borrowers. Um, and, and so that presents multiple opportunities for us and for our investors. Um, two, with the advent of crowdfunding, where we plan to pivot due to COVID and the increased cost of capital is one, like I said, to, to um, focus on our borrowers. So we're actually growing our balance sheet and we plan to extract the value out of those relationships with the existing borrowers by holding on to those deals. We've had multiple exits from those borrowers historically. Uh, it's been profitable on both sides and we believe uh, that that will continue with them. For our new borrowers, once they go through our tested origination underwriting process and, and we elect to do the deal, those borrowers will really be targeted for the crowdfunding portals at that point. Um, previously, we just, we elected to, to sell deals based upon our liquidity needs. At this point in time, we really are putting an emphasis on proven borrowers to stay on our balance sheet and de-risk the portfolio by offloading the borrowers that we still feel are strong, but don't have a proven track record with us. Mm -hmm. Stefan, what's last is group uh, is take on the, the additional risks in the market. Um, you know, how, how it's affecting your, 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 your reviews of opportunities um, going forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the first thing we, we've done, obviously, and I guess the same as my colleagues here, we've gone through the entire portfolio reviewing each individual loan, uh, each individual situation, stress testing each, uh, uh, not only the, the, lend, the borrower, but the, the property backing it up. And what we've been trying to do is basically proactively uh, in, the, in the cases that we thought that were uh, in a situation that, you know, we, we call it the yellow flag here, you know, raise the yellow flag. Uh, we, we, we proactively went to the board, uh, sat with them, decided uh, what was best. Uh, in some cases, we've asked for, uh, you, know, you know, a pay down of something if, if possible. Again, we try to re do repeat business with the same, uh, the same borrowers, which is, you know, uh, it's always the best to work with the people that you know and you know exactly how they will behave in the good and the bad times. Uh, and and, and it's, so far, it's been, it's been a great experience. Uh, even with a uh, more institutional borrower in the sense that you're talking to uh, another private equity fund on the other end, it has been a, you know, it's been a great uh, outcome so far. We've been presenting them with ideas uh, that you know, provides their investors with a good outcome for themselves and obviously puts us in a, in a much better situation in terms of LTV. Uh, because, you know, we, we, as a covenant, we like to be under certain levels and, uh, and, and it's, it's kind of up to us with third party, obviously, revisiting the value of that uh, collateral. So basically, uh, uh, having, uh, making for the need sometimes for a small pay down or, or, a, or in a case, an addition of another uh, collateral and bringing some a third party uh, to, to add that collateral to that specific deal. So, I mean, we've been very, very active and proactive, if you will, with our borrowers trying to you know, uh, create the, uh, the current portfolio that we have to, uh, without a, a, a problem, go through weather through this, uh, through this uh, crisis. For the new deals, uh, I mean, as everyone else here, we're also open for business, uh, which is great. I mean, uh, we have some capital that we've been you know, putting to work. We, we've been obviously lowering a lot the LTVs, raising the rates, I mean, trying to be uh, as much conservative as possible. And as uh, someone mentioned a, a, little, a little while ago, the idea is always to try to have an exit, you know, uh, above the 12 months term from today, because it would give, you know, at, at least in our view as, as an investment group, uh, a much, much better chance for the borrower to have a very, uh, you know, a much better uh, takeout of, the, of, of our deal. So, so that this is pretty much what we've been doing here. Okay, and uh, kind of back to Brock and adding on that. I mean, with uh, disruption and changes in the market and increased risk, uh, I believe come some opportunities and and opportunities for for different rewards. Um, what 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 opportunities are you seeing in the market for private real estate uh, debt funds from your from your perspective? 
I think that the, I'm going to go with technology. And the reason being is that whenever we see in whether it's this industry or any other, a large disruption caused by uncontrollable forces, it's going to weaken uh, the existing players to some degree. And some of them are going to emerge better, the ones that are more nimble, the ones that see it not just as a place to hit sort of reset on thinking, but also a chance to get ahead and with that reset, apply different processes, including technology to it. So that's, you know, that's why I feel confident about us, even though it was, you know, of course we didn't see what was coming when we launched lending in January. Uh, and here we go a couple months later, we, we hit with the coronavirus yet. We remain very positive overall around this particular uh, area of private debt from both the investor side and the lending side. But I'm gonna say now is the time when you have a little bit of down period uh, for, and I'd like to hear again from uh, you know, the rest of the panel too, is, is where are you seeing things go? And then uh, on top of that technology, it's, it's time to, to see how we can deploy machine learning AI to portfolios uh, as well to, to see where we can go with that to reduce risk in the future. Yeah, and I agree with you. Using the data and the technology enhancements that are out there, um, you know, to, to, to be more nimble, you know, to be more efficient, you know, to drive more cost saving across properties and portfolios and, and um, you know, different cost structures is, is really the immediate opportunity that I'm seeing. Some take advantage of and, and will move forward, and others, unfortunately, will fade away if they are, are not able to. Um, but, but great, great point. Uh, Camilo, what, what, what we could all list a bunch of negatives that have happened um, with the COVID impact, but what, what positive opportunities are, are you seeing this and what, what are the main positive uh, situations that you're experiencing? Right now, I think it's too early in the, in the game to, to, to be able to understand the best opportunities. I think we have not had the, the repricing that a lot of people is waiting for. So the pricing, the risk is, 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 is difficult right now and understanding the, the value of the collaterals. But saying that, I think we all, private lenders, direct lenders, debt funds have an advantage because we can uh, review and understand deal by deal, sponsor by sponsor, location by location. And the banks are not taking the time of doing that, most of the banks. Uh, so I think the opportunity is to get access to projects and borrowers that under normal circumstances uh, will be bankable, that the banks will be doing their loans. Um, but because of what is happening right now, they are not getting the answers or, the, or it's taking too much time for, from the banks uh, to accept any kind of, of loan or, or request that they have. So I think one of the main opportunities is getting better quality sponsors and better quality projects because of the situation with the banks. Um, also, uh, we see an opportunity in capitalizing uh, projects because development projects, repositioning projects that already have financing from banks, most of the banks are either reducing their loan to cost, for example, in construction, uh, or requiring more equity to, to feel safer with the projects. And, um, and deal by deal, and you have to be really careful what kind of project you want to capitalize and with what kind of sponsor do you want to get in, in bed with, but, but we've been receiving a couple of interesting opportunities to capitalize projects, either with second mortgages, that the banks are actually accepting some of them because they know that they've been reducing their commitments, or MES, or PREF equity, or direct equity. Uh, and that's the flexibility that we have in our platform that we can work with the different kinds of, the different um, pieces of the capital stack um that, that's basically what we do for sure there will be a lot of opportunities repositioning retail assets but again it's too early in the game but we, we will be looking for that actually we have some borrowers and some people that we know that uh, that's their focus and, and we've been 
reviewing opportunities and talking with them to see how can we partner either financing them or partnering in the projects to acquire really discount uh, retail properties uh, to reposition the project either in a multifamily project or mixed use projects. So we think there are going to be a lot of opportunities there. Uh, we, we should contact uh, Stefan, we should talk again to see if we can do something with hotels that I know that you have experience there and for sure there will be a lot of opportunities in that field. Absolutely right. <laughs> Oh, I, I I agree on the the hospitality sector, uh, resorts, uh, yeah, and different you know mixed use retail projects. Lots of opportunity there for, you know, for us to figure it out and and, and really help those. I, I think the strong properties will continue to do great here at some point. Um, but uh, Tim, speaking of the opportunities, where 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 are you seeing it? How are you pivoting? Um, is, is it impacting your direct lending strategy? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. We're focused on urban areas, uh, but then there's one trick we have up our sleeve here. And recently there was a published list of the top 10 cities in the U.S. for re vacation rentals. And there's one city out of the 10 that's on the West Coast. Um, and that city has had 217% growth year over year. So we're also focused there. And we have one of our repeat borrowers uh, where we have previously completed multiple deals in that city um, actively looking. So, so we are, we're based in Southern California. So right now we're really focused in Los Angeles, Orange County, and the San Francisco Bay Area, um, as well as Arizona. Cool. I'd love to see that list. Just shoot it over to me when you get a chance. I want to see what... <laughs> that's, that's probably one of those tricks up your sleeve. So I, maybe we got to go out and have a, a beer like old times. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, if, if you reach out to me, uh, my email is on the slide. It's a newspaper article. I'd be glad to share it with anybody that wants to reach out. Mm -hmm. And geographically, are you, are you focused more on, on, on West Coast? Or are you able to work across the country? Or do you have a specific geographic focus that works best for you? Great question. Um, <clears throat> Look, we've done deals across the country, uh, but I, we know California. Um, and I have a couple of sayings on that. And, and over the past five years, I've, I've learned a lot. And basically, this, the one saying is we only take investors to markets where they reap the rewards from our experience, not bear the risk of our ignorance. So that's the first one. So we want to understand the market fully before we commit any capital. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we, we're in limited spaces right now. Um, the second, which I like, is very simple. It's um, generally, when we look at a, a deal, it's either a two-hour drive or two-hour flight. Because I don't want a deal to go sideways in the future and then have to spend a ton of capital just taking care of that, flying, traveling. It's just not worth it. So generally, a two-hour drive or two-hour flight. So we're, we're happily based in Southern California at this point. I agree. You got to be able to be there. You got to be able to smell it. You need to be able to um, see what's going on. Um, like I said, we're based in Palm Beach, but I, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm curious to see your list because we, we see a lot of Northeasterners, especially, and in, in, I've seen a lot of, of migration uh, in, in the California surrounding, you know, Southwest region. Similar things here is happening on the East Coast where you see a lot of Northeasterners coming to the Carolinas um, to go into Asheville, to Charleston, to Richmond, to R Raleigh, to, um, you know, for a lot of different reasons. So uh, I agree with you on the geographic focus and, and being able to, to get there. Um, so great points. Um, I, I wanted to ask the question of, of Stefan, speaking of geography, you mentioned, um, some, some expertise that had come out of Brazil. Do you work with a lot of international um, investors and groups? Um, and and is, is the focus any inter, international money coming into in, into Florida and the Carolinas and Georgia, or where, where are you where are you focused geographically? Right, right, right. So, so yeah, most of our capital base uh, comes out of uh, Latin America, um, just you know because of all our relationships, mostly Brazil. Uh, however, we've been, you know, we're getting inflow of uh, U.S. Uh, capital throughout the last year, uh, which has been very interesting. That's on the on the liability side. On the asset side, 
uh, we we are agnostic in terms of uh, geography here within the U.S. So so we have a vehicle that it's only for uh, U.S. mainland, and uh, we do things. Um, we, we can have almost forty percent of our portfolio in Florida. Uh, again, being the farthest farthest uh, out of from here, Tampa and uh, and, and Orlando region or area. But we also do things in New York. We have things in California, Chicago, Colorado. The way we do these things is, uh, and I agree, we, we like to see and understand the, lo the local aspect of the deal is by most of the times when it's not in the surrounding areas is we always have a local partner, someone that knows that space and it's also has a skin in the game. So it's together with me on that sp specific lending loan. Uh, th then, I mean, it's, it's, it's a way for us to have that uh, boots in the ground, right? The eyes and ears, uh, because somebody has, uh, you know, a lot of skin in the game alongside with us, obviously. Uh, but, but we, we, we have a, you know, we have the team and resources to, uh, go over the, the place if needed, of course. Uh, so, but we do have, uh, preferences of, 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 of areas, right? Of, of, uh, major CBDs in the U S. Uh, well, you mentioned Charlotte, uh, it's one of them. We like it a lot. Raleigh, uh, we, uh, Atlanta, uh, so, so Denver, Denver, we, we like that market a lot. So, so we try to, you know, uh, like, uh, like uh, we, we, we come from the finance world, right? So we're all we've been in the hedge fund and, and banking for, for, for very long. So we tend to look things that, you know, from a, from a bottom up perspective, uh, from a top down perspective in the beginning, and then bottom up everything we do to build up a, port, uh, a portfolio, right? At the end of the day, uh, what we wanna do is, 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 is investment vehicles where our investors are, uh, you know, very well diversified, uh, but sector wise, borrower, borrower wise, and, 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 and geography wise as well. We don't wanna have everybody uh, having, you know, the Latin Americans mostly, coming to the US, investing here, and suddenly they're, they're invested in the, you know, South Florida real estate only, which has a pretty good uh, correlation, uh, pretty high correlation to Latin America currencies and, and, and economies as well. So, so having said that, we, we you know, again, we, we, our angle is always to, for, comes from a portfolio management. So the, the, the asset itself is, it's, 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 it needs to an end, right? I agree. Um, and I'll ask you a follow-up question. We talked about kind of geography for, for each of us. Let's talk about specific asset classes and property types of what, what you like and what you definitely don't like, or maybe you're, or, you know, what you're on the fence with. Uh, I could tell you all, I mean, I like pretty easy. I mean, work, workforce housing is, is a, uh, is a constant theme that we're hearing across all markets. Um, you know, not just you know, uh, tax credit and you know, low-income housing, but you know, the, the typical workforce housing has been a reoccurring theme with a lot of our clients and highly supported by different uh, states and you know, local municipalities. Uh, I also looked at a deal personally yesterday that's a uh, flex office, you know, light industrial type property. I've been digging into more of those, um, you know, where you have the, you know, the, the, the large flat, you know, small uh, industrial type warehouses where, where small and medium size and larger size companies can have their, um, their office, uh, but also their kind of last mile type distribution point out to the market. So, um, but I'm interested from each of you, you know, what, what asset classes and property types are you interested in and how is your company and, and platform suited for that? Brock, how about you? We primarily have focused on multifamily. We like that asset class. It, it's a make sense deal. Uh, it allows us to not only look at, especially because we are focused on smaller loan amounts, typically the million dollar and under uh, right now and uh, two million and under as we get going a little bit more. But it does allow us to look at secondary and tertiary markets. And we feel comfortable in those because in many of those that have good economics, and that means broad employment factors where you're not re too reliant on any particular industry, where we've seen a good growth, uh, steady growth, not a cr crazy growth, but a nice steady growth over the last 
uh, 15 years and including what happened in the last crisis, uh, that we see that housing is still uh, an issue with those, a lot of those tertiary markets. And so we see opportunities there. Uh, whereas in retail office, those are a little bit more difficult to gauge uh, in, in those smaller markets where sometimes in the city urban areas, it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, those, those are a little bit more uh, risky in, in our view for those areas that we like to concentrate in. Light industrial, uh, those can be a good play, uh, again, depending on, on, on where we're talking about. So it, it's really that weighing location and, and the asset class where it works sometimes in some locations and in other locations, it's just simply not something that we want to take the risk on. Got it. Camilo, how about you? What, what type of properties are, are, are you liking the best and the worst? Um, so we see what your preferences are. Sure. For the lending side. And, we, and, and, and I know you're more deal by deal type structured anyways, right? So they all kind of stand on their own. Yes, I agree. We, we review every deal and has to stand on their own. But in, in the lending side, we are pretty flexible. Um, we, we, of course, we love multifamily, but it, it's difficult to compete in multifamily. Uh, because normally a good multifamily gets really cheap financing and, and multifamily is still is one of the assets that banks and agencies want to want to finance. So in, in the multifamily part, we either want to buy or develop multifamily through the invest properties or through LB development. So we, we want multifamily, but uh, at least in Florida and, uh, and in the Atlanta area, it, it's difficult to be able to finance multifamily. Uh, our sweet spot for the size of the deals is one to 15 million. And, and, and normally the, the good multifamily is 200, 300 units or over a hundred units, the, the loans are bigger than that. Um, but if we can get a multifamily loan, we do it all, all day long. Um, we like also actually the vacation rentals that, that I think that Tim mentioned. We've been financing vacation rentals here in Orlando for a, for a couple of years. And, 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 and I th we think that it's actually one of the assets that can, can get a higher demand. Uh, the, the demand that the hotels are losing, the vacation rentals, uh, part of, the, of, of that demand they are getting the, the attention. Uh, we have some projects uh, or, or a sponsor that we work with in vacation rentals that uh, two weeks ago, they just opened the showroom for 120, 140, a vacation homes project here in Orlando, and, and in one day they sold all the all the vacation homes. So th there wow. is still a lot of people looking that kind of assets, either as an investment or a second home, um, because they don't want to go to a hotel, but they want to have a second home in a good place with a nice pool, nice area. Uh, and when they are not there, they can rent it and have an operator that does everything. So that that part we like it also. We like single family homes. Um, we think that single family homes, depending on the price and the location, of course, but single family homes overall are, are getting a lot of traction and the sales are getting up. Uh, we, we prefer single family homes than that condos right now. We do condos, but we offer reduced loan to value in condos, uh, as we think that depending on the location, but overall the, the price in the condos uh, will, will go down uh, or can go down. Um, we what, type of, what type of what, what are you offering on like a, a, a single family? I get questions from clients on that all the time because, you know, in addition to everyone that's doing deals on you know larger multifamily and you know and other asset classes, maybe their families and their investor groups and others are doing you know single family, like you said, vacation rentals and single family homes. What what type of uh, of offering is is uh, uh, in general is, is available for those that type of product? Okay, first, we don't do primary residence, only investment purpose or business purpose loans. So, so that, that mm -hmm. leaves out a lot of the people that if they want to live there, we don't do the loan. Uh, we have the license, but we decide not to do that kind of loans. But we do, if you ask me below 1 million, 1.5 million property, we can go out up to 60%. We used to go higher, maybe 65, but right now we are maximum 60 in those kind of properties. Uh, while in condos, we go below 50% LTV. Uh, and require the six to 12 months prepaid, et cetera. So in, in single family homes, uh, we like between 250, 300,000 uh, homes up to one, 1.5 million. 
between 1.5 and 5 million, we think is a difficult market right now. And, and, and higher than that, is, it just doesn't make sense for us. It's too expensive if we have to take the asset back or if we have to work with the sponsor for a long time. Uh, property taxes, insurance, etc. is just too expensive to, to keep the, the, the property, um, for us to keep the property or for the sponsor to keep the property. Uh, land, a lot of people doesn't like land. Banks are not doing land. We see a big opportunity there, but we only do land if the location is really good. If we know a, uh, someone that we can partner with or introduce to the current sponsor to partner with, so if we have a plan B uh, for the property and for the sponsor, we don't want to take the property back, mm -hmm. but if the sponsor doesn't get the equity investors or the money or whatever um, plan that he had, if we have either the interest to do the equity ourselves or a, a developer or an investor that could partner in that development of the land, we, we are willing to do the land and, and, and we've been doing actually good land deals with good sponsors and great locations, um, reduce loan to values below 50%, but at least we are doing land. Most of the borrowers that we know, uh, they don't do land right now. Got it. Got industrial, it. we love it, but industrial is really competitive. So normally industrial, if it's well located, they get financing cheaper than us. So it, it, it's difficult to get industrial deals for us. Okay. Um, well, I got a question actually that came in from the audience uh, from a, a listener named Zach. Uh, the question, and this is for any of the panelists, do any of the panelists consider bridge loans to install uh, solar systems on multifamily or other commercial or industrial properties? Who wants to go first? How about you? Um, we only do first mortgage loans um, in the lending side. If we do the mess of the PREF, the, the, it's because the project makes sense, not only to do the, the, the solar installing. Uh, so, so the answer for us will be no for now. Um, th there are a lot of programs out there that are financing or giving some tax credits or, or, or subsidies. Pardon me? There, there's, there's the PACE finance, uh, which... Uh, it's the PACE finance also, yeah, yes. Is, I mean, it's, it's a much cheaper solution and longer term for borrowers to, to do these kind of investments on their property. So it, it, I, would, I would assume this, this is a tough... Uh, it would be a tough uh, spot for us, uh, for all of us here, I imagine. Or the rates we mm -hmm. uh, work with to be able to play on. Yeah, I agree, and that the, the pace can be quite complicated sometimes. You know, for certain properties because they need to be support. <laughs> they, they need to get the the, the the primary lender to subordinate to pace, and it, it becomes a, it's a it can be complicated, but pace can be really good for those types of projects that it works. But uh, I wanted to throw out that question there from Zach in case anyone had an answer. Um, get back to Tim. Tim, what, what other, um, you know, specific property types or additional value uh, options are you seeing that you're able to provide over other larger private lenders? Got it. Got it. Well, we're, our strategy is slightly different than the other larger lenders in, in that our returns are generated from not only from the weighted average coupon of the loans that are on our balance sheet, but also from the residual income streams or lender spreads that uh, result from the loans that we've previously sold off to our crowdfunding or secondary market buyers. Um, and, and so essentially our focus is more on the transaction and the accumulation of these additional lender spreads that we're obtaining. Um, <clears throat> And, and so with that, our guidelines are really aligned to the market makers in the secondary market. And, and so currently where the secondary market is focused is on primary and secondary markets and the markets that we lend in with reduced leverage and a higher emphasis on experience and credit score. And, and so with that, uh, we're focused on bridge loans for uh, single family residential for non-owner occupied business purpose only. Um, 
uh, rental loans in certain markets that we spoke about. And we have another partner that is heavily bullish in the multifamily space. Uh, so we would look to originate to cater to our secondary market demands. Got it. Stefan, how about you? Um, we, we got just a, just a few minutes left. Do you, you want to add any uh, background yeah. color to that and, and other, any other new lending opportunities you're seeing out there? Yeah, no, I think that uh, we, we, we like the land space as well. Uh, it's something that uh, not everybody uh, does it. So it's something that we, 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 we if we understand uh, what can be built on top of it. And as, again, as Camilo mentioned, if you, if you know how to uh, take a, you know, have a, a way out of it, if your borrower sponsor uh, uh, fails, I mean, that's, that's, that's to us, uh, you know, a good place to be also high end uh, single family home constructions. If this is something that you know we feel that uh, whenever the borrowers, most of them we know, we know, uh, uh, put a lot of the a lot of equity of their own into this by buying the land or uh, you know putting into the construction of these homes, uh, you know at uh, 55, 60, 65 percent below to cost on these residences and places that we we like and we uh, with the demographics are you know uh, positive even even for that uh, smaller piece of uh, you know. Uh, uh, of, of, of people that are uh, can 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 buy those uh, residences is something that we we like and obviously hospitality. I mean, uh, we've uh, we've we have vehicles with, uh, uh, to to invest directly in, in equity in, in in hospitality as well as our vehicle for debt. I mean, uh, so we we like the space. We understand we've be, we've actually been invested in in, in in more people during this crisis. We brought you know a couple of very senior people to the firm in order to be uh, more than ever ready to look you know be able to capture these uh, future uh you know opportunities that might that, that will surely will arise in the in the hospitality i think this is probably the one the, the, sp the, sp the space well we don't we don't play in retail so uh, the hospitality is definitely the space that we see there's going to be a lot more discounted uh, assets to be sold or credit got it got it and, and i got one more quick question for everybody um that came in are you only doing new deals or is there any buying and selling of notes in the secondary markets going on at, at any of your firms? Both. In our end here in Leste, we've, we've, uh, we're doing new deals, uh, but we're also open to acquiring uh, as, as selling. You know, we've, we've got uh, people interested in buying some of our assets at par. And uh, since I have, uh, you know, the, Better, better investments, you know, at higher yields to make uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the primary market. So we're, we're, we're very active in both ends. Michael, I have a quick response for that too, is that essentially when COVID hit, uh, the liquidity market instantly dried up. And, and so we decided just to keep our uh, loans on our balance sheet. They're strong loans, they're great borrowers, they're all current. Uh, and so I question why I should sell those loans off to the secondary market at a discount. Uh, when when they're paying between 8.75 and 9%. Uh, so so we're holding those loans to maturity or, or payoff. Uh, and at this time, we're also raising additional capital, um, about $5 million uh, to deploy. And we actually have about four, just over 4 million in opportunities to repeat borrowers in July. Um, so we're, we're looking to raise 5 million for the start of the uh, Q3. Uh, and then we'll look to originate those to the market and and sell those off on an as needed basis. Uh, Michael, this is Camilo. We, we are similar to to Stefan position. We are open to a, every kind of transaction. We have sell um, loans in the secondary market. We have sold all the two or three loans that we have sold in in the last two months, three months. All of them are at par or even with a, a small premium, some interest um, that we have in the, in the loan. Uh, we are open and actually we've been looking to buy some, some uh, loans at a secondary market, but we haven't found uh, discounts and actually the, 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 good, the good loans, with good, good loan to value, good sponsor, a good asset. Normally, we don't we don't get any discount, so we are not buying those. We would rather originate our own loans. Uh, but but I think it's a moment that you have to be open to any kind of opportunities, be, be flexible, 
uh, and, and 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 try to to try to measure the risk as as, as much as possible, uh, as difficult as it is now. Uh, but at worst case scenario, uh, thinking that this could take six, 12, 18 months, uh, no, nobody knows. Uh, and if you have the 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 patient capital and the staying power, uh, you should be okay. But if you need liquidity in three, six, nine months, it's difficult to take decisions right now with these kind of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I can tell you one thing. If anyone needs any help with um, with uh, tax credits, incentives, opportunity zones, uh, cost segregation, we do two, three hundred cost segregation studies a month across the country on all different asset classes, uh, and with that comes a lot of opportunities for for JV. Uh, investments and equity and 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 partnering with with some of these great panelists that are on the on the line with us today that's what i do at engineered tax services i'd be happy to help um, do those cost seg studies i mean get that 100 percent bonus depreciation it's in the tax law um, and enhanced in the cares act for a reason um, so it, you know it, ch it changes some of the deals it creates some immediate uh, cash flow enhancements and and um, and, and massive tax savings opportunities but it's been my pleasure hosting this this group. Uh, you'll get this full presentation and, and contact information. Please reach out. Uh, I have reasons to reach out to each each one of these for different different synergies that I that I've been thinking about and taking notes. Uh, so it's my pleasure again to be hosting this for for, for the group. Uh, Michael, Jeremy, it's all yours. Guys, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, uh, Brock, Camille, Tim, Stefan. Uh, thank you very much for for talking about this. This is obviously, um, you know, one of the most important topics that we've covered over the last two days. And uh, it, it was a very strong finish. You guys delivered. Thank you. I appreciate sure. it. Well, thank right. you for the opportunity. Thank you for having us. Yes. So uh, Rain, uh, your closing remarks. Yes. Uh, thank you, Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the flyer real estate, direct lending and private debt forum part four. Uh, part five will be on July 16th. That will be a virtual event. Uh, we'd also like to thank our sponsors, Nationwide, Prequin, Boomer and Capital, S&P Global Market Intelligence, Safe Harbor Equity, the Mortgage Office, Harvest Volatility Management, Millennium Trust, Apex One Investment Partners, Intrust Global, Off the Chain Capital, and Clarion Asset Management. We would also like to thank our panelists today for providing their expertise and commentary. We hope you have enjoyed our two-day event. We look forward to having you at our next event. Have a good day.